Hey everybody, and welcome to the next Flame Quick Tip. Now this one's gonna be on a simple task that if you haven't done before, might be uh, useful to know. So it's literally on a really simple uh, object removal um, with 360 video. So this is um, a lat long um, or equirectangular video. And all we're gonna do is get rid of this uh, reflection here. And this can be troublesome if you're doing it and don't unwrap it and redo it. So this is just gonna be a really quick walk through if you've never had to do this before. So I'm just gonna create a batch effects with this clip. And you see it's almost 6K, so it's 5760 by 2880. I'm gonna pull out a map convert and just connect that in. And the first thing I wanna do is tell it that it's lat long, which is the same as equi rectangular. And I'm gonna put this to cubic. Now the first thing it does is it lowers the resolution. And I don't actually want that. So I'm gonna match my specs here to uh, to this guy, so I'm going to make it. Um, I'm going to go custom. I'm going to double click and see if T click works, and it doesn't. So I'm just going to do 5760 and 2880. So 2880. Okay, there we go. And all I care about is removing this guy here. So I'm just going to pull it up on the X somewhere there, where it's going to be easy to do. Okay, so really simple, and it's just clean up like you're used to. So I'm just going to do a G mask. Mass tracer that is, and I'm just going to quickly draw a shape around this guy. Just soften that out, and then I'm going to add a blur, soften it out even more. Now, I think to remember too with anything map convert with uh, flame, uh, filtering is intense. So, the way we put this back, um, we have to kind of pay attention to so we don't degrade the original image and I'll show you why in a second. So I'm just gonna grab a 2D transform now from the output of the map convert, add a comp node, and I'm just gonna go front, back, and then mat for our, our little genie mask. I'm gonna set that guy's context. And then I'm gonna, while double clicking on the 2D transform, press space one, and I'm just gonna go south and that looks like an okay pattern that you can't tell. So now is the bit where we put this back. So we wanna duplicate our map convert because we wanna do the inverse of this guy. It'd be great if there was an inverse button, but anyway. So right now we need to tell it our source now is cubic and we're going back to lat long and that's great. But in order for this to work, what we need to do is invert our, uh, any values or offsets you add on this guy you need to just invert and then we'll line up. So if I'm here, it's 96, I'm gonna go negative 96. And then I'm gonna go space two, sorry, alt two to go to two up. And if we look at the source and then the output, it looks the same, but I've got filtering off. And if we do look at that now, you'll notice a degrade in image, like a fairly substantial degrade and I mean, this is all H.264 anyway, because most of these guys that record this are, but uh, we don't want that happening to everything else. So again, we're just gonna feed it back through. So if we put the output of this guy from the blur into the map convert, you can see our area that needs to be blended in. And it's as simple as adding a comp. So my front will be the output from my comp. My back will be my original source. And then my mat will be the map convert output. So I'm gonna just quickly do that, front, back, mat. And you see now, if we do look and compare between, and we go from the source to the output, you see nothing's changing here. And all we're getting that is changing, if I do the, between those two guys, is what we've just added in. And uh, if I do zoom that out, you can see, I'll go Alt-1 just for this. Uh, alt one and then go to schematic and you can see it's as simple as as that so it's gonna pipe that up there and again this is key because you don't want to throw away detail on these guys and this stuff can get really soft with anything 360 which um, if you haven't worked with you'll know very soon I mean another thing I do like to do is just add a little sharpen just on the area added in because it does inherently get softer so I'm just gonna make that context spacebar 2 I'm just gonna zoom right in and just pull up the sharpen just to see where it falls apart. And that's obviously way too much, but if we go somewhere here, that actually looks pretty good if I do before and after. I mean, maybe it's a bit too much, so I'm just gonna pull this down on the slider. And you see it does a pretty good job. And if we go to, again, 
I'm going to set my source as a context, and then the output is the thing. So I'm going to go space one, space two, wrong one. Space one should be this one. Set as context one. Okay, so now if I do do the result, spacebar one, spacebar two, you can see it's a really quick way to get it only affecting the image, but also with um, the added complexity of a 360 camera. So that's going to be it for this quick tip, guys. I hope it was useful, and stay tuned for more.